OK. Carol, thank you very much indeed. Do you know what, Carol? Shall I tell you why there was a really awkward pause there? You were talking about something else. No, we were actually yes. talking about Howling Gales because James, the band, sitting on the sofa, and they were so enthralled by your um, weather forecast. They were going, <laughs> you see, the temperature does change. It does. It is hot warmer in the north than it is in the south. Yeah, you we see that? You were talking about the live. gales. Oh, look. She said, we're not there, obviously. We're not where we live at the moment. <laughs> no, we're here. Um, and we were like, oh, look, it's not too bad right up there in Sutherland. See? See, see Carol? <laughs> Lovely part of the world. <laughs> Sutherland's a lovely part of the world as well. I know, I've so. forgotten what it looks like. I haven't been there for a while. <laughs> oh, Carol will give you a tour. Carol Thank will give you, you a tour. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, it's been lovely seeing you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, we're joined by James uh, on the sofa this morning. They started out at the heart of the Manchester music scene in the 80s and 90s. Songs, of course, like She's a Star, Sit Down, Took Them Into the Top Ten. Start buzzing in your in yeah. your hair now, in your head now, doesn't it? Um, unlike many of their contemporaries, James has been releasing records ever since. How do they keep their sound fresh? How much have they fallen out over the years? They look pretty cosy now, ish. <laughs> What's falling out? Never. Never. Where got that from? Never. Shall we remind everyone of what you've been up to? Here you go. And they have. Uh, they've come and joined us. Tim Booth, uh, Jim, Tim Booth, Jim Glenny, and Saul Davis from the bank. Good morning, all of you. Good morning. If you didn't listen to the weather before, you wouldn't have had to put your coat on, would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, when you see back the, through I, the highlights like that, what, 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 what's been the best thing you've done so far in your, in your careers together? You... Oh, my wow. God. Wow. That's uh, a difficult one. I'd say making Laid, making a record called Laid with Brian Eno and doing the, particularly the song Sometimes. It was a, the song that, that caught him. It was like, we've been trying to work with him for years. Every band on the world had been trying to work with him for years. And I've had the conversations with the Chili Peppers and R.E.M. to prove it. And um, we sent him these scratchy demos and he was like, rang me up at nine o'clock in the morning, was like, um, this song sometimes, I rather like this. Are there any lyrics to it? And there weren't. And um, we kept putting it off and I hadn't written the lyrics and we, we were recording in the round and we played it to him, uh, recorded it. And he put his head on his hands and went and sat down at his desk like this. And we thought, oh, we messed up. And we went up to him and said, are you OK, Brian? And he said, I think I've just had one of the highlights of my musical life. Whoa. <laughs> and we were like, oh, OK. If Brian Eno says that, we're on to something. Did you, did you have that feeling about that song? Because when you're yeah. going to send a song to Brian, mm -hmm. you know, especially without words, which I think is really brave. Well, gobbledygook. When I oh. kind of... Improvise words. So half of them, some of them are there, but some of it's complete, like phonetic sounds, gobbledygook. Well, I, I make it up. We, we improvise. Every song we've ever written, we improvise together. So it's half mistakes, half, you know, things we're trying to do. And we use all of that in the songs. And the mistakes are often the best bits. How do you divvy up the roles between yourselves? Whoever's got the most energy and the drive. I think often um, we've just released our 14th album. So there's been, um, I guess people take a bit of a lead to some extent or other on each record, you know, and that's about, we're, we're very creative collectively, but there's always somebody that pushes something a little bit. So it's, it's very natural how we fall into the roles that we have. As Tim says, you know, we, we, we get in a room and we make a noise together and we, we jam and we improvise and we make our music. It's, it's one of the reasons, I think it's the main reason why uh, you made a distinction at the beginning of this piece about the fact that we are still making music. Mm. and. Um, that's what validates a band, I think. Uh, we're, we're in our 35th year as a band. And uh, so <clears throat> um, I think it's quite difficult to maintain your creative level, you mm. know, the things that made you good when you first start, not only in music, but with you, uh, any kind of artistic endeavour. And I think that we've, we've managed to buck that trend to some extent or other. The challenge, sure. the challenge for us is always to do stuff that fits in with the quality that we've had historically. Um, and that's not necessarily that easy. I mean, it's not that easy. No, you've got a lot to live up Absolutely. to. When you when we play Sit Down or She's a Star, sure. everyone is going, yeah, that's yeah. that's who James is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. that's a lot to kind of to, to take well, those memories and make new memories. Absolutely. And and you know, this with this record we've got out now, you know, we've got a couple of songs that have had amazing videos that have just kind of taken off and have had a life of their own. Um, and a big tune out now called Nothing But Love, which is is kind of. You're Again, to show. Segway. Oh, it? Segway. Why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? Tell us, tell us <laughs> well, this, the, the Daily Mail called this, and not that the Daily Mail is an authority on these things, um, they said this is better than sit down. Oh, well, okay. Let our viewers make, make their judgment. <laughs>
but love. So the Daily Mail like it. And, and Brian Eno. Sorry. Do you Brian Eno's been involved in this one as well. Yeah, we, we got a bit stuck in the studio. And so I, w I went round to his house and said, Brian, can you help us out on this and another song? And he just put this um, beautiful arpeggio on it. That's all it was. But it just, he has that knack of, um, it's almost like relocating a song, giving a backdrop that you wouldn't expect. Um, that that makes it sound fresher than it would do otherwise. Yeah, do you think otherwise that song's yeah. rubbish? Really. Do you think, so do you Despite agree? what the Daily Mail said. Well, <laughs> well, I was about to ask, do you think it's better than Sit Down? Oh, I don't, it, it's impossible. Oh. For... It's up there for us. When we, yes. when we wrote, when we yeah. wrote it, me, me and him were both immediately like, yeah. this is this is a big one. Yeah. Was, we don't write hit songs. You can't. We improvise, and as Sol mm. says, that's what's kept us fresh because. We will go in a room, we have no idea what we're going to make. And we're bouncing off each other. Mm. But when every so often you do a song and you go, what was that? Where did that come from? And when we wrote this, we yeah. immediately had that. We know Nothing But Love's going to be a big song for us. I also Six think later. that partly um, because we don't specifically look to write anything in particular, we write for ourselves very much so. It's like people who come to our shows, real James fans, recognise that we play the shows kind of for ourselves to some extent or other. And um, that's also a key, really. If, if you go deliberately looking for a hit single, then you're probably not going to find one. You know? we, we, we're useless at steering what we do, and we kind of try to overthink what we're doing, then we usually make a mess of yeah, things. We set off two days ago just to get to the studio. <laughs> <Is that laughs> did well yeah. to get here. Yeah. Uh, we, did say you, we did say you've fallen out before. Do you still fall out, or is it all just sweetness and uh, rice? We, we have heated... We're very passionate about what we do. We got most fell out this morning. We did. I, did no, you? Not, I knew he was going to bring Briefly. that up. Um, <laughs> Briefly. We, well, it's like a family. <laughs> you know what I mean? You fall out, you make up again, and it's all Oh, no, no, no. Did you fall out about? Oh, I can't no, uh, I, I was angry that, we, that, that Sit Down was being used as the, the lit. And it came from our record company, you know. Because it's like we've had 17 hit records and you get a bit fed up with the one gets singled out all the time. Mm. But and, um, the argument is the fans don't, do they, sometimes? But this no. is the one, the next one is the one that you say is going to be even better. But look, it's been a delight. Well, it, it will, we can end a set on this already. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's one of those songs. Same with Moving On on the last record, which mm. got used by many people at funerals. It was about the death of my mum. And it's been taken to people's hearts. Yeah. And so when you write a song that's that emotionally powerful, then it, it's to us, it's a hit. You can't, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go top ten, but it's a hit. Guys, it's good luck with it. Thank Great. you very much indeed for Thank joining you. us. Thank and James's you, James. album, Girl at the End of the World, is out now.